All right, so let's get started with this. So we're gonna do an apple, and I've uh, I've got some pencils that need a little sharpening here. Let me. I'm gonna be using a soft pencil, a charcoal pencil. This apple is gonna be done in charcoal. I've got a hard charcoal pencil. That's just the sharpener. And then I've got, um, maybe I'll use another one of these. Thank goodness for those electric pencil sharpeners. So I've got a hard pencil and a, a soft pencil. This is General's um, charcoal pencils. I like General's, they're one of my favorite brands. So I've got a hard and a soft. I would like to have had a medium, but I just couldn't find it. But <laughs> So I'll just have to work a little extra hard. I'm also going to be using a Conte Paris Pierre Noir B1710. Uh, Conte is charcoal, but it's made a little differently. It's made with a, a black clay and then it's fired in a kiln. So these Conte pencils, now not a pastel pencil, pastel pencil would be softer. The uh, Conte pencils, because they're fired with that clay, they, they're a little harder. And so they're still mixed with, uh, you know, charcoal, which is what, these are just pressed charcoal. It's just that little bit of binder, and uh, again, being fired, it makes it a little bit harder, so we can get a little bit nicer lines. So that's what I'm going to be using. Um, I'm going to be using a kneaded eraser, a gum eraser if I need to, a, uh, and a pink pearl eraser if I need to. Um, sometimes that are also nice, they're not required. I'm going to be using these two the most. I may not even use this. Uh, I may not even use this either. This is a, uh, a plastic eraser. Uh, it comes in this thing. It's like a mechanical pencil almost. You can you know, make it longer, shorter. Uh, these are nice little tools. So I'm going to be using that as well. So these will be what I'm going to use for the, the drawing of this, of this apple. Um, I'm also going to be using uh, a couple of stumps. These are paper stumps, um, and I could be using, you know, you could use all kinds of, you know, you could use a, uh, you could use Q-tips and cotton balls. You can also use uh, tortillions if you're so inclined. Um, I don't use these as much, but I keep them around just so people know what they are. I'm going to put a small one down there, a small stump as well. Um, these are going to be what I, I'll use. I might use some, some cloth uh, if I need to, or some Kleenex. Kleenex is another thing I'll, I'll keep around. I'll use Kleenex on this sort of thing. Uh, but this is the, the stuff I'm going to be using for this. So I'm going to get this stuff out of your way. I've already sketched out my apple here. Um, and uh, I, I did it using construction technique and um, taking curves and cutting them into straight lines and angles. If uh, that seems strange to you, or you, uh, check out the, um, check out some of my classes that I that I have on online, Check, or you can go to the Kevin McCain Studios YouTube channel. Uh, they'll talk a little bit about uh, construction. But, and I'm doing a foundations class too, so that'll I'll be online here in a bit. And these are just good techniques. I can see that I got a little um, a little off here. I'm gonna sort of shift this over here. I think, well, maybe we'll move it over here. <laughs> this is just to see if you guys are watching, I guess. Um, I'll move these off the page. Uh, there's gonna be in here a, an apple that you can use to try to download, to, to try to do the, the drawing either along with me or after you've watched this to try to do a drawing of the apple. We're going to be doing a shading of an apple with charcoal. The paper I'm using is just a regular Strathmore uh, 300 series um, out of a pad. It's an 11 by 14 sheet of paper. Um, no, actually this is a 14 by 17, pardon me. But it's the big, the big thing is that it's a Strathmore, that it's 70 pound, that it's medium texture. Um, it could be the 400 series as well. Uh, you know, there's a lot of cansons make some nice uh, drawing paper, but you want it at least over you want it over 60 pounds So at least 70 80 pound paper um, 
It could also be Bristol or, or illustration board, but this is just a nice cheap, it's, a, it's an inexpensive paper, but it's also a nice paper to draw on. So we're gonna use this. Um, I'm also gonna be doing, we're gonna be dealing with the apple and we're gonna be dealing with the apple and form shadows. And again, if you're, this is hopefully you're already aware of what form shadows are. If not, again, uh, you can check out my uh, channel on YouTube. That's Kevin McCain Studios. Um, you can also, uh, if you're in Idaho, you know, look me up or Boise area, uh, come join me for a class. Um, and or, you know, like I said, I'll be doing some fundamental uh, videos here over the next little while. It's probably going to be a bit of time before those before those get um, listed. It just takes copious amounts of time, much more than you'd think to do one of these videos, at least for me. I don't. Some people might be super quick, but that ain't that ain't me. Um, so this is just gonna be a tabletop. This is gonna be the apple. The the uh, this is just gonna be a, an ambiguous sort of you know this um, will be the the wall table tablecloth apple something fairly simple. Uh, before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and start to put in where the core shadow. Um, where the core shadow is starts and the core shadow is where the light and shadow meet and so very interesting so um, every you, you and again you want to be looking at what you're drawing I, I've got the this set up I've got a little still life and I'm watching this I'm looking at this still life as I'm as I'm doing my as we're as we're doing this I'm uh, taking my eyes out of focus because you always want to soften your vision when you're when you're doing something like this uh, it's really going to help you in so many different ways you know get used to taking your eyes out of focus it's called squinting and any uh, any any good art class will talk to you about that it's, it's really that fundamental so and again, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm starting to again, put in where the, the core shadow is starting. And I'm looking up here and I'm also trying to get a, a feeling for where the, the darkest part of it is. As I'm using my charcoal. Um, I'm also going to come over here. Uh, again, because this is in shadow too, so we're gonna cut and this is you know the the core shadow starts down here So again, we're gonna go ahead and start to put this in right through here And I'm not being subtle. I mean, I'm really making this dark uh, and, and we want that we want to make sure that it's very clear when we first start this, what it is we're doing? Um, to protect my my drawing, you're gonna want something to um, put your hand on to uh, to keep your hand from from you know, dragging through the charcoal. Otherwise, you're gonna end up with a really dirty hand. So I've got just a protective sheet here that I'm going to be using. Now I'm gonna go ahead, and this is. This is again the shadow, so I'm going to go ahead and come in here. And I'm going to put a flat tone over my shadow area. And this will be the starting part of my. Critting value and form shadows on my on my apple. All right, like so. So again, we're really trying to be very clear that this is where the shadows start versus where the light starts. So 
again, we want to be clear. We don't want to be ambiguous. We don't want people to be trying to guess what's happening. Now, as I'm making my marks, I'm trying to uh, use some, some marks that are conforming to the, call the form. This is round, and so I'm going to start making marks that are, again, round, uh, like the apple itself. Now we're going to do some blending here, but we're not going to go nuts with the blending. Um, we're going to really just start start trying to put in again more and more and more of these of these form shadows as we see them on the apple. This is rounding down as it rounds down. It's going to start to pick up a little bit of getting darker as it rounds down and underneath the la the light's trying to wrap there. Um, this is also rounding under this way, so this gets a little darker as, it, as again, this apple is rounding under. And then after the round, it rounds under, it starts to, underneath here, kind of come out a little bit for the foot. And so we're going to want to make sure that we have some of that happening for the foot of the apple. I'm also trying to make sure that I've got some of the contour here built into my apple. Uh, in other words, I don't want to forget that this is the outside edge of the apple, or what we call the outside contour. Um, constantly looking up at the the object I'm drawing, so that I can get a better feel for it. And I'm looking up there and ask myself, what's lighter, what's darker, what's lighter, what's darker? And I'm looking for the different shapes of this is being lighter, this being darker, this being lighter this being darker. And whenever you're trying to identify shapes, you use um, basic shapes, circles, triangles, rectangles, um, parallelograms, also alphanumeric shapes. Does it you know, look like a letter of the alphabet? Does it look like a, one of our numbers? Uh, again, you're gonna, it's gonna really help to be able to identify the, uh, the different, different uh, shapes. There's a couple little dents here that are creating some little checks in my my shadows, and I'm going. I'm, so we're not really dealing with details, but we are dealing with the form. So in other words, there's a little dent. The form is going to be affected, and so we definitely want to have that in there. And again, we're going to have this pretty clear that this this stuff is happening. Again, there's some little little um, dents and furrows and things like that along here as well. Like so, and again, this we haven't done much, but this is already starting to look like an apple. It's a combination of some of the contoured drawing. It's a combination of the values that we're putting in. Some really good stuff here. We we want that. We 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 want it to start to create that illusion of of an apple. As this rounds down down into here. Again, this little foot is underneath the apple, so it's turning away from the light. So there's a little core shadow, again, because it's going into shadow. Because it's coming down here onto the foot of the apple. Um, same thing here, it's getting, again, a little darker as it comes down here. Um, let's see. Now this apple that I'm doing is a yellow apple, so I have to be careful that I don't don't go too dark. There's you know that whole thing of you know it's well it's light it's it can't be too dark, and so I'm doing that too. I'm trying to I'm trying to make sure that I don't go too dark as I'm. I also need to deal with the um, the bottom contour of this apple coming down around here. around here around here like so we're going to bring this out, we're going to look for that shape that I'm looking for, the shape is kind of like a, a, 
a rectangle with like a triangle that begins to bend up and wrap. And so again, I'm looking for these alphanumeric shapes. This comes out and it looks like a reverse J hook that comes around here. Again, looking for those alphanumeric shapes. So again, we're not doing a lot of gradations just yet. And, and for the most part, we're actually gonna be doing this where sometimes we think, well, we gotta do the, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm, this is getting really rough, but we're not focusing on, we're looking for planes, smaller and smaller and smaller planes. And if we get the planes in the right value, even without wonderful soft gradations, it'll start to look like that's exactly what's up there. And so again, gradations become very, uh, very powerful tools, very powerful tools for our, for our drawing. And keep looking again, take your eyes out of focus, squint. Now, as you start to, as you start to stare into the shadows, your eyes, your eyes open up. And so as your eye opens up, your, the shadows are going to get lighter. And then as you stare into the lights, the, the, your eye will close down to see more detail. And so then the, the lights get darker. And, and if you're doing that, you're actually going to be flattening out your, uh, flattening out your apple. So you want to be, you know, be cautious with that. Why you want to, you want to be aware of, of what's happening there and why it's happening and, and so to, when your eye starts to get hypnotized by the light, or not even hypnotized is the wrong word, but as your eye is trying to focus on those areas, uh, just be aware of it. And then what you'll do every once in a while is you'll, take, you'll close your eyes, let your eyes rest, and then you'll take your eye, open your eyes, take your eyes out of focus and look at the whole, the whole object. And again, you'll see different shapes and the values will be much more clear what's dark and what's light. And that's what you want in your drawing. If you start trying to, you know, draw this area and that area, kind of like a puzzle piece. And so sometimes we'll jump around the, the drawing a lot. Now I'm not jumping around right now, but I will here in a few minutes. So again, we, we're, we're, we're already got something again that looks very much like this apple thanks to the, uh, thanks to the shadow shapes, thanks to what the shadows are doing as they wrap around this, this, this gorgeous piece of fruit. Now I have some middle values and I have some light values. This is going to have some light values up here, but this also is going to have light values because this is the top plane, this is the side plane, and then it's going to tuck under a little bit and go for the bottom plane. And each time you change a direction or, or put a change of plane, you're going to have a change in value. And so I'm going to look for these, like this is the edge where it goes from the top to the side, and you're going to look up there and look to see what, what the shapes are doing right along these these transition areas if you if you will because that's what's going to really make this feel like it has some depth all right so i'm going to start to look up there and ask yourself what's the shape i'm seeing there's a long sort of little uh, triangular shape right through here that gets a little darker and then it gets lighter right next to it so again we're trying to look for these and it kind of comes out a little bit into kind of like a little you know kind of like a little reverse P shape there or make it maybe a little D on the end of a triangle uh, so again I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to, to uh, see as much as I can of these objects this again is turning and so right through here is the bulb part of the apple and so this is going to be getting a little darker even though this is sort of a ridge through here but because it's turning it's going to be getting darker as it comes down so I'm going to look for these main transition areas they are some of the most important areas on the apple this is further underneath than up here, so this has to be darker than that. Not by much though, but, but it still has to be just at least a little bit. And
All right, so then we're gonna come over here. Again, we've got the apple up here doing its thing. This is the transition area. You have, again, the apple. I'm gonna come along this edge, work along this edge to, uh, to create the illusion of depth. Now I'm starting to jump around a little bit. I just, I just realized this is this needs to be pushed back. This is in front receiving more light. This is further back receiving less light. So it's got a, this back here has to go a little, a little darker, a little bit. Um, I'm gonna come over here. Now I'm just using right now. I'm using a tripod grip. That means I'm holding pencil between my my thumb and my first finger and it's it's sitting on my third for you right-headed folk it looks like this thumb first finger third finger that's a tripod grip so I'm using a tripod grip I'm also trying to again I'm using it towards the back of the pencil at the very least and I'm trying to get this uh, so I'm trying to get these to again follow the form these are coming this way these strokes that I'm trying to use something about like that okay all right so that's looking good this is let's look up there take a look Respond to what's happening there. Look up there, take another look, respond to what's happening. So forth and so on. All right. This kind of has, comes in a little bit. Over the top, there's a little bit of a sort of a mound or a, you know, this gets a little, so this goes into a little furrow here. So we're going to go ahead and bring this over, but it's going to be getting, it's not going to be as light as this over here because this is lower. It's going like this. Um, let's see. And again, I haven't done a whole lot of blending here. I'm taking my eye out of focus. I'm looking at the object that that I'm trying to draw. I'm looking up there at the at the subject, looking back at my drawing, looking up at the subject, looking back at my drawing, comparing back and forth and back and forth. Now again, I'm using these lines to try to you know come around the apple this way. I'm looking for, you know, these, anything that can show the contour of this apple, I, I want to use. Um, let's see, I want to do anything I can to make this apple, remind myself this apple is round. Now this is, uh, some people might, un, who's uh, maybe have done a lot of car, has seen cartooning and, and, and uh, or old engravings or no Albrecht Durer's work, or most likely you've seen in comic books. The people I was just naming are, are, are classic artists and certainly very important, but if you know any of the vintage comic books, you'll see this stuff a lot, and it's called cross contour. We're using a line to to, to describe these lines going this way. It says, yeah, that must be round because these lines are wrapping around it like that. So this is, again, cross contour value we're creating value not we're not doing just line we're, we're trying to create value with our line but the line is is actually going around a form the line is is trying to show what is happening on the form of this apple all right like so um All right, so we're gonna to continue to uh, put some of this down. 
some of this value, try to bring this through. Like so. Now, right now, this is as dark as this over here, which is not a good thing because we want this to be our light values, middle values, and then there's a highlight somewhere around here. And if everything's the same value, it's going to look like it's flat as a pancake. So, so what I'm going to do here as I'm working is I'm going to try to stay aware of that and start to leave these alone a little bit more so that I can work on these areas that should be a little darker. I still need to bring this up a little bit. So if you're like, hey, you said you're going to leave it alone. What happened to that? You're totally deceived us. Uh, it's just, <laughs> sorry, I'm just being ridiculous, but yeah, uh, I just want you to understand that I, I did, I haven't put everything in that I need to over here and I'm still going to stick to the game plan I talked about, but right now I need to do a little bit on this, uh, over here before we, we start working back into the, uh, the dark tones, not dark tones, pardon me, into the middle values. These are the light values, middle values, middle values should be darker. And so right now, this is where I'm starting this. I, I've put down the barrier, if you will, for where a lot of the, the middle values are going to be starting on this apple um, in the lit side. And so we're going to keep, you know, we're going to be keep this up where we're going to try to create, again, this illusion of value wrapping around a form, value creating, uh, turning this from a flat piece of paper into something that may look you know, something that has dimension and that has form and makes you go, wow, wait a minute. Starts to fool the eye, as we like to say, because what we're doing is we're taking this two dimensional, this, this two uh, dimensional piece of paper and we're trying to make you believe and to ignore your senses and believe that this is in fact something that has dimension, something that has form. It's, it's, a, it's a trick, it's a sleight of hand, it's a visual sleight of hand. And that's what's so fun about it is that we're just like magician magicians. We're just like um, musicians or you know these uh, entertainment folk where we are trying to entertain and we're trying to have the public take a visual journey with us through our through our uh, paintings and drawings. And that's where the fun really is. It's you know that's what makes this stuff exciting is the fact that we can create these these illusions that we can create these now are these as these lines continue to uh, I, I continue to overlap these are they start they begin to merge more and more and more and we get more and more what starts to feel like value so even by you know the fact that I said well you know we're we're not dealing with gradations just yet we are getting something that's starting to feel like we've got some gradations even though we really haven't done much because of the fact that you know we've got everything you've got areas are the right value we have areas going darker as they come around this uh, and all this stuff helps create this illusion of depth all right I keep this up this is too light this cannot be this light if that's my highlight this is about the same light that's that's wrong 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 so I'm going to take that out Right, so we're going to go ahead and start to make this into um, some gradations here, like so. This is going to be getting, again, a little darker as it comes down here because we have a little bit, uh, this is where we're really hitting the round bulb of that, of that apple and we want some of that to start to read, as people will say. Uh, and that's just another way of saying we want to make sure that we're showing it. Um, as this goes around. So I've got this over here. Um, I've got this down here. And we need to come back here. Now this is like a light middle value. Uh, it's, it's getting a little bit of reflected light. Not much because it's on a dark tablecloth, but that tablecloth is still reflecting just a scotch of light. 
the very you know at the very um, bottom of this apple because even though you know light objects all right so we're gonna go ahead and continue on now, I don't I think um, I don't do enough uh, classes it seems where we don't do blending with with uh, with charcoal so I'm thinking I might just go ahead and leave this uh, unblended and just leave this the strokes where we really are working with charcoal the way we would work with graphite or any other any other medium and so I'm gonna I'm, I'm going ahead and I'm I'm trying to get well I, I, I might yet change my mind on that as well now the one thing about charcoal it's hard to keep charcoal light and so most of the drawing I've been doing is with this hard charcoal pencil um, and so yeah if, if you want to if you want to stay on the light side you're gonna really and you gotta be careful with charcoal you look at it cross-eyed and all of a sudden it'll it'll be too dark you know it'll, it'll have gone too dark very 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 quickly and so again, you have to use very very light pressure I'm using the side of the charcoal pencil. I mean, you name it. Whatever I can do to keep this light, I'm, I'm gonna try to do it. So, it's gonna be lighter if you use the side of the pencil. It's gonna be lighter if you hold. I'm holding way back on the end of this pencil. So the further that you hold back on the pencil, the, the lighter your marks are. And it makes a real big difference when you're working with charcoal. Just those, just those two insights will will help you have so much more control over your over your drawing it'll seem almost like night and day in, in a good way you know you charcoal can really the hardest part is controlling your lights keeping it light enough and there's some people that just ne never learn that there's some people that try to combine media they'll start using graphite for their lights so they have uh, more control over their lights and I, I found that there's uh, some people who are very, very well known who have tried doing stuff like that. And the reason why is they just they never were formally trained to learn how just a, just a difference in your handhold makes all the difference in the world, you know, especially with charcoal. Uh, graphite, not near as big a difference, but with charcoal, it is a huge difference in terms of the way you're holding it. And it can really help again take your drawing from, you know, sort of a, a medium level to a much higher level, uh, and 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 make it you know much more sophisticated. And again, have more control and just all that good stuff, all the stuff you want, stuff that makes people look at your your drawings and go, ooh, who is is that? And you're like, that's mine. Thank you very much. Um, so again, I, I want some of these. These, these, uh, there's no value, or there wasn't, we're putting some in there now. There wasn't any value behind the apple. And so this apple is kind of just floating, disembodied. Kind of a strange feeling to not have any value behind it. Now again, we're also, this is a pretty quick little lecture tutorial demonstration. Um, if I was going to you know, try to put this in a competition or something I would be you know I'd be I'd be spending a whole lot more time on my drawing you know and so uh, the more time I spend on the on the charcoal the more I can build it up the more I can really do make the gradations you know if I was gonna blend I could blend some stuff you know it's just and we're, I'm not gonna sit here and make you watch me for like five six hours while I as if I, you know, as if I was trying to take this to just the highest level of finish I could. But we've already, again, with the uh, the only difference between now and those like five or six hours would be just getting just the right transitions through here. The basics are already there, and so um, it's it's that it's that last five percent of the drawing. You know, you're like ninety five percent of the way there. That takes most of the time. When you once you get you know used to, to dealing with 
you know, whatever medium you're working with, once you can control it, you're like, all right, um, that's an important concept to understand that you're just reinforcing what you've already put down. And uh, of course, that's, you know, that's a challenge in and of itself. When you're first learning to draw, you're like, got so many things you're trying to keep inside your brain, it can sometimes be very, very difficult, you know, to establish the basic relationships and again those basic relationships are light from shadow and how the values are moving as it as the light moves across a surface but once you're like yeah okay I know where the I know where the darks are I know where the lights are I can you know transition this very very comfortably you know all that is established in these in these in the basics like right now we still have this apple hopefully uh, it still looks like light and shadow um, there's some things in here where this the the shadows gets maybe a little bit too light, so you know it, it kind of uh, it kind of may look a little bizarre at this point, and so this would be where you could go in here and go, all right, well we're going to go in here and we're going to try to because if anything in here is as light as anything over here, that means it's not in shadow, so like this reflected light might be a little too light, so it might have to go a little darker. And then if the it's all the relationships, if the if the reflected light goes darker, well then the dark values next to the reflected light have to go darker. And you know it's again it's, it's all these relationships. It's how how is this value against that value and how does this you know affect that? And that's very much what drawing is. So right now I, I darken that, but then I have to darken the 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 dark values next to it. In order for this to look like reflected light again because you know again it starts to get as dark as this well then it, it, it makes it look like it's a dark value but it's not it's supposed to be reflected light and so again as we're as we're in here trying you know and this would be kind of the sort of nuance where that I'm talking about that takes most of the time where you're trying to get in there and really make sense of these of these uh, the subtlety in the different areas like that's still too bright so I'm coming down here and I'm knocking this light down right through here uh, to make it dark enough to be in the shadows uh, you know if I take my eyes out of focus uh, I can see and if I go ahead and, and close my eyes and then focus on the object I can start to see how much you know these are just too light down through here too they have to be dark enough that they're part of the shadow family and just those little changes all of a sudden this feels much more like it's in shadow uh, and so just it's, it's all about again I, I can't say enough it's all about those relationships if I'm darkening something and I can't tell what families it's in in other words I can't tell if it's a, a core shadow or a dark tone or a reflected light well then I need to push it into one of those three families that's the relationship in the shadows one of three families Core shadow, dark tones, or reflected light. This is the core shadow, which is right here where the light starts, and this is supposed to be the absolute darkest of the uh, of the shadow family. And then as you get further away from it, that's the dark tones. And as you get further away again, you start getting into the into some of the reflected light. All right. So again, this is just, just these little bits. Now there's this weird line through here. That's kind of from the paper texture. Uh, and it's not it's not what I want. I would have to come in there with a uh, an eraser and sort of try to pick some of that out. Or I could try to integrate it in to make it look like a blemish or something like that on the apple. But either way, it, it's, not, it's not helping things too much right now. So again, just a couple, of, just a couple minutes in there, and I think this is already starting to look much better in terms of its making it very clear what's shadow, what's light, what's light, what's shadow. If I look at a drawing and I'm not sure what's in the shadow and what's in light, that's a problem. Again, everything in the shadow should be darker. Everything in the light should be a little lighter, and that's what I want. I want it to be very clear, so that some someone looking at it is very clear as well so that's that's what we that's what we want through there uh, 
Again, this is, let's see, this is a little bit of a cast shadow from the stem. We haven't dealt with the stem just yet. I think there's just enough value outside here to, um, there's some little edges here that have to be, have to go back in and kind of fill them in. Right. Just a bit. I'm gonna darken this right here along that edge just a bit. And let's see. Just a little bit. Now, the other thing I have to decide is which is darker, the wall or the, uh, or the apple. And there's a couple things, so you, I'm sure you've heard about artistic prerogative and creativity and all this good stuff, which are certainly good things. And as the artist, you have to make some decisions. And a lot of the decisions are contrast. So like I'm gonna make, if I make this wall darker, when the, where the wall meets this dark cloth, it'll be a softer contrast than where the dark cloth meets the apple. And that's a good thing because so because if I don't, if I don't do that. If the highest contrast is here, that's going to make the edge the most important thing, and where those two meet. And it's not. It's actually the apple. And so there's times where, like right now, I'm actually making the the uh, the the wall a little darker than it is, so that the highest contrast won't be between where the wall and the, and the tablecloth meet, that it'll actually be where the wall, not the wall, but where the tablecloth meets the apple, that's gonna be the the, uh, the darkest, and that's what we want. We want it to, um, have the highest contrast where our main, our, our main subject is, and this is a drawing about the apple, not a drawing about the wall. And it's just, it's a slight, it's a slight change but the change will be significant. And that's, uh, that's hard to recall, or not hard to recall. It's sometimes hard to do in the beginning because you're like, well, I'm trying to do what's up there. I'm trying, why would I change it? I mean, it, it's perfectly attractive what, I, what, I, what I've got going on. But the thing, the thing is that we're looking at a scene where we focus on, on what we want and we kind of ignore what's in our peripheral. And when you're drawing something, the viewer can't do that unless you manipulate things to create the areas that they want to look at. And so I'm going to, I'm going to want to make sure that when people look at my drawing of this apple, that they're looking at the apple. And, uh, and so as an artist, you're going to change contrast slightly or for either eye movement or composition or any number of reasons. And if you're, if you do that, people will really enjoy and, and understand what it is that you want them to look at. And, and we got to think of it like uh, characters on a stage and we don't want people going in there going, I don't, I don't know what this is about. If people come at your drawing and go, I don't know what's, what's going on or, or what the, what's being said or what the main thing is, what I'm, where I'm supposed to look. That's not a good thing. That's a bad thing for you as the artist. You want them to be very clear about what it is that they are experiencing. And it's not just if you're doing representationalism. If I'm an abstract artist or a non-objective artist or someone that's trying to use different materials in a new way, but I'm trying to create something that's talking about the plight of, of uh, people in a certain place or certain groups that are having, you know, that are being that are having issues or, or problems and, and I want to you know, shed light on that. I need it to be able to be clear that when people look at it, they understand what am I trying to say. And I've always had, uh, I had a really good uh, instructor. He's like, look, if you have to explain to people, you haven't done your job as an artist. And that's no matter what you're doing, whether you're doing you know, representationalism or realism, or whether you're doing abstraction, whether you're doing non-objective, whether you're doing uh, um, expressionism, you want it to be so clear that people know, you know, very, you know, very quickly, oh, this is what this is trying to say. This is what it's trying to tell me. 
you need to have hints. You need to have it built into your image. You need to have expression of line. You need to have expression of value, color, whatever you're doing, mark, uh, material. You know, everything should be a story that that's trying to say what it is that that you're trying to to uh, convey or explain or tell the viewer. And again, if you if you can, if again they're like, you know, that was interesting, but I have no idea what the heck that thing was or what that was supposed to tell me or what the story was, well then uh, it's a problem. As, a, as an artist, you should have, you know, again, no matter what you're trying to say, you should be clear. And, uh, and the good artist will put it in there. You might have to do a little puzzling out of stuff, but because you don't want it so, you know, you don't want to be have someone like beating you over the head with a club. You, you, that it's, or and you don't want to where it's no, it's it's so you know there's no mystery either. Um, you want the viewer to be thinking, but you want the elements there. You want them to be able to go, okay, yeah, I can see what this is about, and then you can put other elements in that that reinforce it, that are a little soft or a little subtler, uh, almost like they have to. You know, the person is is on a visual. Um, you know, like they're, they're on discovery. They're discovering what, what, what it is that you have to say. Um, so, I mean, that's that's what's fun about about art. You know, is when you're you know having something, you have something, a story that that you want to tell, that you think other people will find fascinating. So again, I think I, we're um, again the shadow looks like shadow. So now here's another problem. The middle values over here, or pardon me, these are supposed to be next to the light values, but these middle values over here are probably a little bit too light. Uh, and these are probably gonna be fine. So I'm gonna come in here with my with my um, my needed eraser, which I can you can use this, and if you if you uh, pounce it up and down, it, it it pulls up a little bit of the value. So. I'm going to lighten my I'm going to light my light values a little bit through here. And that will help this side stay lighter while this side is in shadow because again if it's the same value here as here, you're going to have something that's going to start to look flat. So sometimes you go a little too far. I went a little too far with my value and now I can take it out a little bit. I'm pinching out a blade on my on my eraser so I can you know do these long almost line like uh, lighter areas that are very linear or in other words they're line um, I can I also want to clean up this edge a little bit so I'm going to take this guy that's again very a small a small eraser and I'm going to bring it along here to just clean that up a bit Yeah, just a little bit, like so. Um, let's look over here. Take that off the end. I come over here a couple more times, just a couple places to try it again. Just a little bit more lightness over here, so this has a little more value. Do a little bit of that here, some of this erasing. So I want this to be lights, you know, uh, on top, and then we have our light values, our middle values, and our our dark middle values, our highlight. We want all this to be very clear as we're as we're as we're making this. Let's see. Try and do sort of a secondary little highlight coming down there. And maybe this is secondary bit of highlight there. Um, and let's see. Something about like that. That's again my highlight. And I think this is I think this is working very very well. Again, if I was gonna do anything it would it would again be you know, can I, uh, 
Is there a pl couple places where I could strengthen just a, a couple of marks? And it's, it's not going to be much. It's going to be very soft uh, marks. that'll attach to these other these shapes and help it have more like there's a, a light division between this section here and that section there and so I'm trying to be very gentle very very light because I can't get it too dark if I get too dark I'm gonna be back in that same boat where I was, it was just too much but if I can put just a little bit in there that might be just enough to get away with what I'm trying to say so um, and let's see if I can come in here a little bit like so all right so we're gonna go to the next part I think we're to the point where we can probably put a little bit of the of the uh, we're gonna work in here a little bit just a little bit and we're gonna put the stem in too And this is the, the cast shadow for the stem. So we're gonna make this a little darker as this comes up and over. All right? Okay. And uh, let's see. This is gonna get a, a little wider as it goes over the, the top of this. So I'm gonna come over here and go, okay, what's What's going on here? Now I'm going to take, uh, I've been using all hards. I'm going to see if I can get over with using the soft because the soft is going to be a little darker. And that's what I want. I want a little bit more dark in this area. Now this is going to be behind the light. This is going to again be very, very dark over here as this is all backlit. Okay, so it's going to be very, very dark. Um, then we're going to come down here, and this is going to go. Uh, that might maybe went a little flat in there, so I'm going to pull just a little bit of value out. Grab my hard, come back in here the hard because I want a little less. Uh, I don't want it as dark. I want a little more control. Um, I'm going to use this uh, Conte. It's again really good for edges. And then I'm going to come back to my hard and do that. And then we want, this is the shadow side, so this will be the darker side. So we're going to come in here. And go up into there. So now we've got just a little bit of the stem. Now I think... The stem probably has up here where this starts to catch the light, it's going to be a little bit lighter in there. So I'll just go ahead and pull just a little bit of that out. So we get a little bit of transition. This is going darker, getting a little bit lighter as it comes out a little bit for that, uh, for that stem. Pardon me. Mm. Mm. So again, we're going to go ahead and pull that down. Um, once again, the stem is really fairly dark. I think I went a little bit on the dark side in a couple places. So I'm going to lighten this up just a scotch through here, just so it doesn't seem like it's just a you know, just this black nebula or something. It just seems a little too much. So we're going to come over here, bring this back down because I blew out some of the darks. 
and then through the middle here, we're gonna lighten, you know, lighten it a little bit more. Okay. So on the other side of this, so it's very light, the uh, the apple. So trying to clean this off a bit. We're gonna make sure that this this um, it's very clear the contour there. This we're gonna come up here again just a little bit. There's a little bit of value as this comes up. A little bit of value as this comes up through here. Just a scotch. Um, there's a little bit of value as this. Comes over the top here. It gives it a pick up just a little bit of this edge. Just a bit. Like so. And uh, so that's about doing very, uh, this is looking really, really quite nice, I think. Um, there's just a little bit of perhaps still my hard charcoal pencil I only use the soft for a couple minutes and that's mostly because this is a uh, this is a golden delicious I believe is what it is anyways it's the light yellow apples they're so lovely I think they're just absolutely gorgeous apples um, to paint and draw so that's that and then what we're going to do we're almost done here we're going to just put in some of the darks and we're going to call it pretty much good again I want to double check so there's a little bit of a little bit of value through here. A little more value as it comes down into here. But this is really dark. This is very clear. We want it very clear that this is this is where things start to go into shadow right through there and that this is part of it too and this is down here is part of it as well um yeah okay and then let's see we're gonna pull this up a little bit this got a little bit too got a little carried away in there all right, and this is going to come in here again. Like so. And so again, we have something that's looking a lot like a lot, a lot, a lot like the apple. Uh, the only thing here we could change just a little bit is is there's a, as this comes over and as this comes over there's some reflected light right here that really hard to, it's, it's important though it's like one of the most important things uh, is uh, you know again right here where this transitions into and then this goes slightly into shadow through here again this is some of the most important stuff these transitions are, are really where it's at. It's gonna give this just so much life if we can just you know, get in, get some of those to happen. If they go too dark, which I think they've done a little bit through here, again, they, it can be just too much. So I'm gonna pull some of this back out. So again, when we're drawing, a lot of times it's a push, it's a pull, uh, you know, it's, uh, between uh, being clear and, and, and sometimes softening things and being I don't want to say less clear. We're not trying to be ambiguous, but at the same time, we're trying to uh, leave some room for interpretation, perhaps. Um, and again, this looks pretty dark. But the moment we do this, so we're again, this is tablecloth is dark. In fact, this tablecloth that I'm, I'm drawing is almost black. So now I've got to be very careful where this hits here. I also don't want to put a white line there again that white line is going to again be a higher contrast so you can also make the edge there softer again if the edge is softer as opposed to to crisper it will feel less 
Uh, it won't come forward. It won't try to jump. Uh, ha but, you know, the contrast will be less. And that's a, that's a good thing. Okay. So, maybe we'll... so again, we want, this, we want this edge really crisp. So we're going to come along here and try to make sure that we've got a really crisp edge. Um... So we're going to uh, this is soft and soft will be darker but also will show more texture and so usually we're gonna overlap both the soft and the hard to get a better range get a better range of value And again, you have to be very, very gentle, very, very soft with charcoal. It's just, if you look at it cross-eyed, all of a sudden you got nothing but black. And so, and that's the hardest thing when, when you first start. Uh, I'm just using a side-to-side -side motion, even though I shouldn't be doing it like that, but yet here I am. Uh, so this is a tripod grip. I was doing it um, just kind of scooting my hand, which you can get away with this piece of paper, but it's a bad habit to be into because you don't want to be doing that on the drawing and touching it, otherwise you're going to be you know, scooting the, and blending and blurring and getting your hand all dirty from smearing everything around. But as this gets darker, again, this apple is going to start to look you know, lighter and so forth and so on. And um, maybe went just a little bit strong on this, on this value through here, just a bit. Let's see, I'm going to go ahead and take the hard. And the hard is going to come in here and it's going to fill in some of those white dots for the texture. It's going to be really good. For filling in some of this texture. Alright. So there's that right there um, and again so like right here where this where this is supposed to be the value this is supposed to be we have to decide which is supposed to be darker and because this is again a golden delicious I've decided to make the for good or bad this, this may be a poor decision now that I'm thinking about it but this goes darker that makes that reflected light look lighter and then the reflected light goes into here and it looks darker and that has more an illusion of depth that this is, you know, two different values going over two different, go, this same value going across two different, very, two different values and it gives it more of a, a realistic feel to it. Um, I think I can get away with this. Now, I'm gonna, I haven't put the value for the cast shadow and the cast shadow is going to be really dark and that's where, once we put this in, this apple will really start to feel light because again we don't have all the the value relationships in yet and again as we do this 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 apple is really just going to come to life which is what we want we want all these part of the uh so before i, I did any finishing of this apple because i mean i could I could, could keep playing with this for hours but i wouldn't go any further right now until i have the rest of the values in because you need everything addressed, all the different values in, so that you can then uh, know how to adjust everything else. So again, I'm going to come on over here. And this is going to be... bump that out a little too far that's a little too much so we're going to take that out and then I'm going to fill that back in because that was to redefine the edge and this is to, to push down that light dot um, now you're going to hear this it's it starts to make a uh, uh, people some people think it's like nails on a chalkboard to me it doesn't bother me that much but the, uh, the, the the charcoal will start to squeak a little bit. 
uh, when you're really trying to get some nice dark values on there. I'm going to cover this up so I can, again, I can get in here and really punch this shadow. And I'll bring the shadow out. And it's going to be dark enough that this is dark enough that it looks like that is in light. Again, it's all about those relationships. And we might not be able to do it with just one charcoal. So this is pencil. We may not be able to do it with just one charcoal pencil. So this is, again, this is my soft charcoal pencil. And if I want to uh, get rid of some of these little dots that's making this look lighter, I'm gonna have to go in with my harder charcoal pencil. that will then help this fill in. So I'm gonna layer, I'm gonna layer harder pencils over soft. And the great thing about the harder pencils, you see how it's taking out those little dots? It's doing that because the pencil is harder. It goes deeper into the texture. You can keep, you know, so that's what I'm doing. I'm also changing the angle. Again, I'm using a tripod grip at this point instead of the baton grip, which would be like this. Whoa. Or this is a, this um, baton grip again is like that, or uh, sometimes I'll let it come forward, whatever. But this is more the try. The baton is like this, and I can, you know, kick my hand up if I need to, or I can turn my hand like this. That's a baton handhold. This is the tripod. This is the one. There's only one or two grips. It's, you're always doing either one or the other. There might be some variation, but because of the way the hands turn, you might think, "Hey, is that a different grip?" No, probably not. It's just we're not used to seeing it, and sometimes. Uh, if, you're, if we're not aware of it. And I, I switch around without even thinking at this point, which, uh, so, and, and you will too. If you start getting used to this, you'll start going, oh, this is better for that. And that's better for this. And and, and, and it won't be such a, a big deal. But in the beginning, it can kind of drive some some novices nuts. They're like, what are you doing now? And I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm doing this. You know, because I'm just, I don't pay as much attention. I just do things as I need to do things instead of, you know, thinking about them each and every time and again you will too the more you do this the more you're gonna start to do the same thing you're like yeah, I'm done I don't know I'm kind of doing whatever I have to that's, you know oh that's a tripod grip yeah okay uh, and it's so it's it's something that, that everyone develops as they as they get further and further into into this so again now that this pardon me now that this is in here the apple starts to feel light as we can see this relationship of values. And again, if I, if I had lots more time, I would really play because there's a there's a little bit of variation here. Like this is darker, this is darker, these are lighter. Same thing, this is darker, these are lighter. Uh, and so the biggest thing with charcoal again, you don't have quite the control with graphite in some ways. And all that means is I'd probably have to go in here with an eraser, lighten that up, you know, and or I could darken on either side of it. You know what I mean? So you have to fill in the patches. And you have to do that with graphite too, but with charcoal it's a little bit, it's, it's softer, it shows a little more texture. It's, it's, it's um, you know, you have to do more of it. You know, so you have to do the same thing in graphite, but you have to do more of it with charcoal. It's just the nature of the beast. And that's fine because charcoal is quicker than graphite. So you're like, oh, I'll tolerate it, you know, cause I'll get this done, you know, in half the time or, or less. And, and that's what you want. So just a few minutes there, I've left the areas that were darker and darker in the areas around them, uh, and so that's and, and it's and it's and that's it. That's all it takes. Like right here, this is this little shape, which is kind of like a half C or or something like that, is kind of a little bit was a little lighter. And so I went in there and I just darkened it. Now it disappears. This little V right through here is a little lighter. Again, I can come over here, and sometimes it's hard to see that when you first start. Again, part of drawing is learning to see, learning to understand what it is you're looking at. And that again comes with time. It's just like learning uh, to ride a bike. It's like learning piano at the very beginning of learning piano. It seems overwhelming to play Mary Had a Little Lamb, but after a couple of years, you're like, you can bang that out with your eyes closed and, you know, play with your feet or something. It's just, it's that, it's just much simpler. It's much, at least, you know, it's, again, I don't, I don't play, I, I learned a little bit of piano. And so I had to, I had to go through it and uh, I did more voice stuff, but 
so I kind of have a feel for it, but in the same instance, it's, it's that you know, I kind of that was a little bit outlandish. But hopefully, you understand what I mean. It's it's not a big deal. You know, if you if you water skiing, you can slalom ski or ski on one ski. You know, ski on two skis is, isn't you know all that hard at all. But when they first learn to ski, and they're draw and they're dragging you around the lake, and you're swallowing half the lake, seems like a pretty big deal then. Uh, but after you get used to it, it's, it's not as big as it seemed. It's not as insurmountable as it seemed. So again, originally I told you I, I might do some blending, but we haven't done any blending at all because I wanted to keep this. This was looking so nice, uh, and sometimes people think that you have to blend with charcoal, and you really don't. You can do a lot with charcoal and not blend at all, and this is this is a good example of that. So we have basically our dark, our medium, our light, and then in our, in our, our round apple we have light values, we have um, and these are part of our uh, light middle values. These are our dark middle values. We have highlight, we have core shadow, which is where the light and shadow meet. And then we have dark tones that are just lighter than the core shadow. And then we have reflected light that's gonna be the lightest in the shadows. This has been Kevin McCain. Uh, I hope you'll you know, stick around and, and watch for some of my upcoming videos. Uh, we're gonna add some other sorts of fruit and then we'll get into more advanced still lifes uh, where we have some more advanced objects and how do we develop you know more complex situations and uh, there's going there like I said there is a photograph of the Apple uh, after you've watched me do this you know pull that up download it and then try to try to do something you know the, the same sort of thing try to draw what I've drawn and uh, you know try to execute it that's how we learn that's what we want and that's what I want you to do this is a little bit too bright so this is jumping f uh, forward more than that so again I can come over here and just put a little bit of, of value down and again these are the little nuances that that takes all that that time you know, some of you might be like man six hours what would you be doing well that's a good example and then you might go well this has too much texture I want to I want to get in there and I want to take out some of the texture and 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 you keep going, you know, I'm going to do some of this, I'm going to do some of that, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and that's, that's how you get things to a nice level finish. So yeah, try this, try to do this on your own, and I wish you all the best. This has been Kevin McCain. Uh, stay creative and, and have fun. Enjoy. Bye-bye now.